Welcome to the Contact Podcast. Oh yeah, baby. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Call Tax Podcast. I'm your host, Donovan Jones. If this is your very first time tapping into the podcast, I just want to say I appreciate you taking the time. Time is something that is so precious and valuable, something that you can't get back. And so the fact that you would take a little bit of your time to come spend with me today, I truly, truly appreciate it. Hopefully you'll get something out of this episode. Hopefully it'll be a source of encouragement to you. If this is your very first time checking out what we're doing here, Basically, the bottom line behind everything that I'm doing is I'm trying to do three things. I'm trying to point people to God. I'm trying to encourage people and I'm trying to build people's faith. And so if that's something that you can get down with, I ask that if you're not already subscribed to the channel, um, throw a comment down in the comment section uh, like this video, because it really, truly does help with the algorithms. The more engagement that it gets on YouTube and Apple and Spotify and all those things, the more that the algorithms pick it up and say, OK, people are excited about this. People are interested in what is going on here. And and this is really a movement through call to act through. I really look at the extension of not just myself, but like. Antoine's podcast, Studio 124 of Sound Mind, Young Minds podcast, basically biblical, Jake's music, uh, God Body's music. I'm looking at everything that we're doing here on fire, uh, Sons of Thunder, and, and we're just trying to, to start a movement where we are just encouraging people to look to Christ. You know what I'm saying? And so um, if you guys could partner with me in that way and, and just kind of throw some comments down in there, tell somebody about what we're doing here. I truly do appreciate it. It means a lot. And so um, first thing that I want to do is I just want to get into what's up because this topic that I'm going to talk about today is a little bit heavier of a topic. And I'll be honest, I don't really know how much I'm going to share um, because it is kind of personal, but I think these are the best kind of episodes. And these are the episodes that are needed because it's real and it's not unique to me. Like each and every one of us has a separate story. Like God has uniquely woven our stories, but a lot of us go through things that somebody else has gone through. You know what I'm saying? Or maybe somebody else has gone through something that you need their story to come out so that you can find healing on the other side of it, or you can find a way to cope or deal with what you're going through in that moment in your life. And so my pastor said something a while back because people like to say seasons a lot. And that's, I don't really like saying that. I find myself saying that on here sometimes. I'm not a big fan of that phrase, like this season of life, because he brought it up like, not everything in life, sometimes like a sickness is a season. Sometimes if it's like a cold or something like that, but like he was describing it as like his kids as they're growing up, they they've moved, all of them have moved out of a certain age to where they don't do the things that they did when they were younger. And he's like, this is not a new season. Like they're never going back. So like, you know what I'm saying? Like this all is completely new. And so, um, maybe something that's going on in your life right now, it's not a new season. It's like a, it's, that's just your new normal. And it's something that you're never going to go back to the old, but there's things that you can bring with you from the old to encourage somebody else or to uh, just inspire somebody else to keep going or to point them to Christ or whatever it is in some way. And so that's kind of what this episode is going to be a little bit about, but first let's go ahead and get into what's up. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? All right. So for my what's up today, first of all, I just want to say I hope you had a very blessed and safe and happy Thanksgiving. Hopefully you guys ate a lot, was able to hang out with the family and just have a good day. So I'm recording this on Saturday, November 25th. And so we went to my family's house today and we went to Kelly's house on a uh, family's house on Thursday. And so basically how it went was I tried to because I didn't want to have to work today. I hate working on Saturdays. And so what I did this whole week was I combined, I basically worked a route and a half every day this week because we were off Thursday. So Monday I worked all of my Monday route and then I worked half a Tuesday, came in Tuesday, knocked out the second half, did half of Wednesday. You know what I'm saying? And so it was a very exhausting week. So when it got to Thursday, I was like, okay, I'm ready to just get a little downtime, hang out with the family, eat a lot of good food, watch football. So we went over to her mom's and basically we did just that. There wasn't anything out of the normal. There wasn't anything that was crazy. We had uh, ate a good meal. Um, I know there's sometimes a lot of family drama and things like that nature, but we were blessed to not have any of that. It was just great downtime with the family. I think the funniest thing that happened was our five-year-old Landry, he was sitting there and um, my wife's sister had brought him a piece of pumpkin pie with pumpkin pie with uh, the Cool Whip on the top. 
And so he ate a bite of just the Cool Whip and he was kind of like dancing. He's like, yeah, 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 this is good. This is good. And he had never had pumpkin pie before. So he took a big bite of the pumpkin pie part, the actual pie. And he just put both of his hands over his mouth and he was like, mm, like this, <laughs> this, I don't like this, you know? So that was pretty funny to see. And then um, I was able to get a little bit of a nap in there, watch some football with Kelly's dad and her uncle. And so we really just had a great day. And then today we went over to um, my sister's house for our Thanksgiving and we had, you know, big spread turkey, ham, all that good stuff. And just really enjoyed it for me personally. I'm a big fan of meat and potatoes. So anytime you have chicken, you know, ham, turkey, and mashed potatoes, if you give me a piece of bread, I'm good with just those three things. And so uh, there was great mashed potatoes on both <laughs> both sides of the family. Kelly's sister, uh, you know, is her mashed potatoes and her macaroni and cheese. Like me and Kelly do this a lot where we'll say, like we'll, we'll say, uh, what is it called when you like death row, like your last meal. Like if you could pick anything, like what, where would your main entree be like your main meat and then your sides, whatever my two sides would be her sister's macaroni and mashed potatoes. Amazing out of this world. Um, and so, yeah. So if you guys want to throw down what your favorite side dish is down in the comments, um, go ahead and do that. Maybe I'll comment back to you and we can, kind of have a little t back and forth there arguing over side dishes, but there wasn't anything too crazy or out of the ordinary there. Just a great time with the family to hang out and kind of relax. I did have to go to work Friday, but I was able to get it knocked out and a lot of businesses and stuff like that were closed. So that my route was significantly shorter. So I was able to get home kind of early and uh, just hang out with Kelly and the kids. And then Saturday, you know, today went over to my sister's house and now just trying to record episode here. And this one's been a very weird episode to record for whatever reason. I haven't been able to, to get started. I've, I've restarted the episode like five or six times because I couldn't just get that start the way that I wanted to. And so um, if you're somebody that's listening to this right now and you're thinking about starting a podcast, I'm almost a hundred episodes in. And there's a lot of times that it takes me five, six, seven, eight times before I can even get a start that I like. I don't even know if I'm going to, I'm going to go with this one. I might restart it from the beginning, but I just wanted to talk a little bit today about something that's been coming up pretty often here recently. And I, I was just praying about it and I felt like the Holy Spirit was telling me like, I need to speak about it. First of all, there's a song by Matt Carney and I'm going to read a couple of the lyrics here in a minute. But um, for those of you who do not know who he is, I believe the genre of music that he is is considered like pop or maybe like singer songwriter. If you've been listening to this podcast for a while, you know that I'm a big fan of rap music. So he's not really my flavor, but like growing up, um, we lived in a very strict uh, Christian house where we weren't allowed to listen to a lot of music. And my parents got divorced um, the summer of seventh grade going into eighth grade. And after they got divorced, it was, it's very weird. Like I, like I said, I don't really know how much I'm going to share in this episode. Um, so we didn't listen to a whole lot of music, but when my parents got divorced, like some of the rules kind of went out the window, like things changed and things are still changing constantly. Like my dad told me some news today when we were at my sister's house that I was just like, this is so weird to me. This is, this is like completely foreign than how I was raised. Like this, the things that are going on right now, but, um, that's not my story to tell, but anyway, so we started listening to, to more like switch foot, uh, Reliant K things that we weren't allowed to listen to before. And one of the musicians that we started listening to was Matt Carney. And he has this one song and I believe it is from that year, like 2007, 2008, something like that. Um, then I'm going to get into, uh, in a second, but I've just had this topic brought up several different times and I was thinking about it as I was talking to one of my friends the other day, and I'm not going to bring up any names because this is something that's personal. And this is something that I know a lot of people deal with this. This story is not unique to me. There's so many people that have dealt with their parents, um, coming from broken homes. Um, so many people that have dealt with growing up with a single mother or single father and all those sorts of things. And so this is not just like a unique story to me, but maybe something that I've been able to learn through it can be beneficial to you. If you're in that moment in your life that you're saying, I don't really know what, you know, maybe your dad has been, has been brought back into your life and you're like, okay, how do I deal with this? Or maybe you've never had your dad and you're having a son or a daughter for the first time. And you're like, how do I, fa I don't know how to father this child, like I've been given the blessing of having a child, but what do I do? 
I'm just going to go ahead and tell you, I do not have all the answers, but these are the things that I'm going to tell you today that have helped me, especially over the last couple of years. And so I want to read a couple of these lyrics from this song. And this is again by Matt Carney. And this song is called What's a Boy to Do? Um, and the very first, I'm going to read several of the lyrics here. In the very first verse, he says, I guess I'm looking for the right way to do this. I guess I'm looking for the right things to call pretty. Young boys playing in the park, turning their backs to take a shot. You know I'll stay sharp around here because they're stoning and leaving type. It's the kind of love that comes and goes when there's company coming around. And then the chorus says, what's a boy to do who knows no man now? And so I just want to kind of talk about that for a second because it is like that. He's like, basically he's saying in these lyrics, like, I'm having to figure things out by myself. Like, I, I didn't have anybody to show me what are the things that I'm supposed to be into? What are the things that I'm supposed to call pretty? He's like, I guess I'm trying to to figure out how to do this. I guess I'm trying to figure out what pretty is. I guess I'm trying to figure out what life is. And I didn't have anybody to show me that. One of the next verses, he says, daddy's been looking down his nose at all of them. And I've been looking around for someone to tell me who I am. He kept saying I was too young to finish a fight. I die each time they came. I never got to draw my knife. Man, that's uh, to me, that's so sad because it's like I can I can relate to that because even growing up and, and I don't want to make this seem like this is just an episode where I'm just bashing, I'm bashing my dad. There was a lot of things that I wasn't taught. And I mean, I'll just be completely honest. It was a lot of things that I didn't know, a lot of things that I've just had to figure out by myself, a lot of things that I wasn't taught. I don't think my dad knew. And I don't, I don't know, I, you know, I don't know his whole upbringing, but I just don't think he was taught everything that he was supposed to be taught. I think there was a lot of things that his dad let him down on. Um, and then he came from a broken home as well. And I think there was a lot of things that his stepdad let him down on. That doesn't mean that they were horrible parents. They probably did the best that they could, but there was a lot of things that he wasn't taught. So therefore he didn't know exactly what he needed to teach me and my brother. I was telling my, um, one of my friends about this the other day, like I cannot remember a time where I sat down and had a significant conversation with my dad, like anything that was substantial, something that like I needed to know like something that was going to help me to be a father. Like now I have four kids and a lot of times I'm looking like, dang, man, I I'm hope, I hope I'm doing this the right way. Like, I hope I'm being a good dad to them. I'm, I'm trying my best here, but it's like, I don't have all the answers. I don't know everything that I'm supposed to do. And so uh, like, I look at that and me and my dad always bonded over sports, especially after my parents got a divorce. And so it was one of those things that whenever we talked, it was really just like, how's basketball doing? You know, how's practices going? How's this going? How many points did you score the other day? That type of thing. And it was even, you know, it was just one of those things that I felt like the only time I could talk to my dad was if it had anything to do with sports, because it was just like, what else do we have to talk about? And so, like I said, that's no knock on him. That's just like, you know, when you're gone, you know, once my parents broke up, he, my dad remarried and he moved a couple hours away. So we didn't see him very often. And the woman that he was married to was very controlling type who, you know, I, like I said, I don't really know how, again, how much I'm going to share, but I'll just say she was the type that whenever me or my brothers and sisters tried to call, she made it hard for us to talk to my dad. And so even when we did talk to him, we could, it was, it, she was one of those types that whenever we called, hit the phone was on speaker and you could tell that she was sitting over his shoulder, that type of thing. And so when you can't really have those conversations, how are you supposed to grow, you know, as a man, if you're not being taught these things and, and what is it? You know, how are you supposed to grow into things? How are you, as Matt Carney said, like, how are you supposed to know what to call pretty? How are you supposed to know the right way to do this? Um, and and how he just, I think he just describes it perfectly where he says, I died each time they came because I never got to draw my knife. And the line before that, he kept, he said, you kept saying that I was too young to finish a fight. There might be somebody that's listening to this right now that feels that way. Maybe they never got that, that confidence built inside them from a father figure. I had a strong mother in my life, like, and God brought strong men around me for a season. And I'll, I will say that a lot of those guys, it was for a season because they're people that I don't talk to anymore. I don't have anything to do with anymore, but God put them strategically in my life at that time to give me something that I needed in that moment. And I can pick several things that I do now that came from those men, and even stuff from my dad. And and I'll be honest, my, me and my dad, we have a great relationship now, but for a while there, we did not have a very good relationship at all. And it was one of those type of things that I was, I would if somebody said like, you look like your dad or blah, blah, blah. It was one of those things like, don't ever say that to me. Don't ever tell me that I look like my dad. Don't ever tell me that 
this is something that my dad would do because it wasn't, that wasn't what I was striving for. I wasn't striving to, to be like my dad. And this is, this is not an outing episode or anything like that, but this is, it, it was just one of those things that uh, people don't know what's going on in the background. And so, uh, people don't need to know what else going on in the background, but it was one of those things where the perception of our family was one thing, but then how it was really going in the background was a completely different thing. And it was just like, man, I don't want to say anything that's going to hurt his reputation. But at the same time, don't tell me that I look like him or don't tell me that this is something my, that my dad would do, or this is something that reminds you of him because that's not what I'm aiming for here. You know what I'm saying? And so again, I, I look at that and I, I look at that in my own life because I'm not saying that my dad's a bad person. I think my dad's a good man. Um, I think my dad loves me. I think my dad loves, I know my dad loves me. I know my dad loves my brothers and sisters, but especially when you're a kid and you're growing up, your emotions are all over the place and you're, you're, you can't really think rationally removed from it. I am thankful for everything that went into all those years of tears and pain and, and not seeing my dad and all those things. I'm thankful for all those things because it made me the man that I am today. And it really was an example to me. And we're going to look in scripture and see, because I, because of all this, I believe that a lot of scripture is just specifically examples for us to follow. Um, a lot of these characters in the Bible, and we're going to read that in a minute, but one of the biggest things that I learned from it is I feel like none of us should like just strive to be our parent or we should, we shouldn't put anybody on such a pedestal that we should strive to be just like that person because that person is a human being and anybody that you put up on a pedestal, they're going to let you down. I'll just be completely honest and transparent over these last couple of weeks. I was telling Kelly about it the other night. I've been praying about it. I don't know what the deal is, but like my language has just been not, not good. Like I've been, I've just been getting frustrated more recently um, in the truck. Like if somebody cuts me off at work or if somebody's blocking where I need to go, I've just found myself using language that I don't need to use. You know what I'm saying? And and it's like, it's just weird because I've never struggled with this kind of thing before. Like, I'm not going to say that I've never cussed in my life, but it's it's just been something that's not been an issue for me. But over the last couple of weeks, I've just found myself like in this weird place of like, it's just coming out. And I, and I was like praying about it the other day. I'm like, what's the deal? Or like, why is this? You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, like, I'm not perfect. If you think anybody is perfect, they are just going to let you down. Do not put anybody on a pedestal because no matter how good of a person they appear, nobody is perfect. The only person that you should be striving to be like is Jesus Christ. And he set that example for us in his 33 years. Read the Gospels. If you want to see who you need to strive to be like, read the Gospels. Read Matthew, read Mark, read Luke, read John. Read those. That's who you need to try to be like. Not your parents, not your pastor. You know, not, you know, your favorite artist or your favorite athlete, because those people will let you down. The only person that you need to try to strive to be like is Jesus Christ. And I, so I just want to, so I just think that um, none of us should be striving to be just like our parents. We we should be striving to be better, I believe, than like, even if my dad was the best dad in the world, I want to strive to be better than that. And that's what you need to strive to be too. Like, if you have a father that you look up to, or if you're, uh, you have a mother that you looked up to, or a figure in your family that you've always kind of raised, they, they raised the bar in your mind. Like that is the person that I need to be Str strive to be better than that. Like, that's the goal. Like there's always things that you can work in a, and improve on. Like if you see they're doing something good, take on that and build it and try to be better at the areas that they're good at. If you see the things that they struggle at, pinpoint that to say, okay, that's the thing that I need to make sure that I don't get wrong. That's the thing that I've been able to do through the good and the bad of the way that I grew up is just learn from it to say, okay, my dad wasn't around for this and this. Me and my dad didn't have these conversations. I think even my dad, me and him have never had this conversation. I don't even know if he's going to listen to this episode, but he, um, like I said, we never had any significant conversations. I don't think he realized the, um, the power and the the validation that his voice could give. You know what I'm saying? I don't think he he realized that. I think he thought, and I don't want to put words in his mouth, but I think he felt like it was unimportant I, in a way. I, I, don't, I don't mean that to sound like he didn't care, but I just think like, I'll just use this as an example. So because I didn't get certain things growing up and because I didn't, uh, was not, I feel like trained in a certain way to be a man in my teenage years that I was just kind of like he, like Matt Carney says, like trying to find the right things to call pretty. And and I want to read this other verse real quick too. Uh, one of the last lines he says, uh, it's like trying to find a light switch in the dark. 
And that, that really nails it right there because that really is like what you're in this dark room and you're trying to figure out, okay, how do, what, what, what do I need to do? Somebody guide me to the light. I don't even know how to get to the light switch. Like it's just, it's pitch black dark in here and I don't know where to go and I'm by myself. You know what I'm saying? And so the other day, my son and, and I, I use these things as, okay, these are the things that I'm going to make sure that I do as a parent. And no, I'm not going to be perfect. Yeah, I fail all the time, but I'm going to strive to do the best I possibly can to to be and do the things in the areas that I didn't have. I bought this shirt a while back and I gave it to my brother and it said, um, be the you that you needed or something like something to that effect. And I just want to challenge you in that way too. like be to somebody else what you needed, things that you knew that know that you missed out on things that you wish that you had be that to somebody else. Sometimes the prayer that you've been praying for, you're the answer for somebody else that's been looking and, and asking God, where is this? I, I need this. I'm, I'm, I'm hurting here. I'm missing this here. I need some help. Sometimes you're the answer to that prayer, but we're so stuck at ourselves, looking at ourselves like, uh, man, I don't have this. I didn't have that, blah, blah, blah. Help somebody else. You know what you were missing, especially when you get to a certain age. I know I'm, I'll be 30 next year and I know the things that I needed as a kid that I'm going to give to my son and that I'm going to give to my daughters and I'm going to give to whoever the Lord puts me in front of and gives me an opportunity to say, look, I was you. I know what you're going through. I can speak to it. And so my son the other day, just to get back to that whole uh, validity behind the, the power of your voice type thing, I, I've talked about this on episodes before, so I'm not going to be contradicting myself when I say we should, the, the validation that we should be seeking is from God. But God put, especially fathers, and here's the thing too, I don't want to sound like you know, men are just all you, men, 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 men. I'm not saying that at all. Men and women both are equal. But we have distinct characteristics. We have distinct uh, uh, things that God has put on our lives. You've got a problem with that. You can bring it up to me if you want to, but I'm just going to point you to the Bible or I'm just going to point you to God. You know what I'm saying? So, like, take it up with God. Like, God made man the way that we are. God made women. And and when you get to that certain age, especially for, for young boys and even young girls, because I remember my daughter saying stuff like this, but you're like, where's dad? And, and what, you know, dad, look at this dad, look at that. And, and, um, a couple of weeks ago, this is something that I always tell my son. Um, I tell him that he's tough and that he's strong and that I'm proud of him. I tell him all my kids that, but I just bring him up for this specific story. So I tell them these things all the time. Like, I'm proud of you. I try to make sure I do it at least a couple of times a week before I lay him down in the bed. And so um, I always tell my son, like, you're strong, you know, you're tough. And um, I was laying him down a couple of weeks ago for bed. And um, he said, he sat up and I said, lay down, buddy. And he held up his muscle. And he said, fill my muscle. And so I felt his muscle. I said, yeah, dude, that's a big one. I said, all right, let's go ahead and lay down. And he laid down and he said, dad, am I tough? And I, you know, it's, it's one of those things that, I didn't I, like, bef I don't really even know how to word it. Like I didn't think me saying, and maybe this is just me being naive and saying this, but those times that I told him that he was tough or strong, I didn't think there was any, like, I just thought, well, I need to keep this in his mind, but I didn't, I don't think I realized even the power that that was, that was being said by me voicing that to him out loud. Because when he said that it clicked with me as like, Oh wait, he's like, believes it when I'm telling him like it's 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 verifying to him like yeah I am tough because dad says I'm tough you know and so I was like yeah bro you're tough you know the toughest little five-year-old I know and so like I think about those moments and I'm like I'm already trying to have little conversations with him and with my daughter if it's just me and them I try to you know cut away with with each of them individually it's hard as you you know we got four kids and, and it's not as much with the three-year-old and the one-year-old, you know, it's more the nine and the five-year-olds, but it's just one of the things that I'm trying to be intentional about each of these moments. And again, I'm not perfect, but it's something that I know that is needed um, because I, I, I don't want to repeat the mistakes that I went through. You know what I'm saying? Like that my parents went through. And so um, for me to have went through the things that I went through and then not learn from them and grow on them and do better at them, then what was the point of it? You know what I'm saying? And so let's get into some scripture to talk about this for a second, because I've got a couple things that I want to share and then we're going to get out of here. So first of all, like I said, I've been struggling here recently and I, I love the way that the Holy Spirit can really 
open your eyes and open your mind to what you need to be doing. We're going to read a, a specific verse about this, but I was praying earlier today because I've just been feeling in this weird funk. And I, and I said, you know, my language has not been where I've wanted it to be in my mind. I've been, just been kind of, I don't know, in a weird funk lately. And I think it has to do with on fire. And I think it has to do with all these things that God's allowing us to do. And Satan is pushing back as hard as he can because he doesn't want this to go any further than it is. And so I understand that the target's getting bigger and bigger on all of us that are a part of on fire. But this is this was just one thing that I was praying earlier today. And I was like, man, I need to get into the book of Psalms because anytime that I have any kind of spiritual warfare, I have a spiritual warfare playlist on my phone. And then I always get into the book of Psalms. And I was like, man, I'm going to read Psalms chapter uh, 150. And so I just opened up my Bible and um, as soon as I opened it up, it just opened to Psalm 119. And so I was like, I'm just going to read this because Psalm 119 and the heading of Psalm 119 in my Bible says, your word is a lamp to my feet, which coincides with the lyric. And I don't think Matt Carden is a Christian singer, but he's talking about finding a light switch in the dark. And then I read here, your word is a lamp to my feet. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to just start reading this. And so I picked out a few key verses here in Psalm 119 that I thought would be good for today's episode. And the first one is um, verse number two says, blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who seek him with their whole heart. Verse number nine, it says, how can a young man keep his way pure by guarding it according to your word? So if, if we're trying to do the right thing, if we're trying to walk in a way that is worthy of the calling that God has given us, if we're trying to be the best person that we can be for Christ, how do you do that? By guarding your heart according to your word. It means read the Bible. <laughs> you know, like The Bible's got all the answers that you need. Verse number 10, he says, With my whole heart I seek you. Let me not wander from your commandments. Now let's skip to verse number 17. It says, Deal bountifully with your servant that I may live and keep your word. Um, verse number 20 says, my soul is consumed with longing for your rules at all times. Like people want to know what the point is. People want to know the, 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 the best way to live their life. People want to know, like, how do I do this life? How do I do it? Like there's, 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 there's people that are saying things all around, like all over the world. Like, what am I saying? Like people that are giving you answers from a worldly perspective, but the psalmist is telling us right here, like I'm, I'm, my, I'm consumed with longing for your rules at all times. Like I want to know the best way to live my life. I want to know how am I supposed to do this? Truthfully, how am I supposed to do this? Verse number thirty six, he says, "Incline my heart to your testimonies and not to selfish gain. Turn my eyes from looking at worthless things and give me life in your ways." I, you know, I read that and I'm like. The times that we're struggling or the times that we're dealing with something, it's like, we just need to be asking God, like, allow me to turn my eyes to you. Allow me to look at you. I, I made a video about this the other day that Peter, whenever the, the disciples see Jesus walking on the water, it wasn't Jesus's idea for Peter to get out of the boat. Peter said, Lord, if it is you, what did they all say? It, they all said, it's a ghost coming at us. And Peter's like, Lord, if it is you, Call me out on the water to walk with you. And Jesus' simple response to him was just, come. He doesn't say, you can't do this. He doesn't say, who do you think you are? He just says, come. And when Peter is focused on Jesus, when he's looking directly at Jesus, he's doing the impossible. He's walking on the water. But the second that he turns away and looks at his circumstances that are around him that seemingly are impossible in that moment, he starts to sink. Because he's not focused on the one that is allowing him to do the impossible. And that is the same way with us. Like if you're wanting to know where to go in my life, if you're wanting to know what to do, just keep your focus on Jesus. If you're trying to figure out, okay, what, where do I go? I didn't have a father figure growing up or I didn't have a mother. I didn't have Christians around me that were trying to encourage me or trying to build me up in the faith. First John chapter two, verse 26, it says, I write these things to you about those who are trying to deceive you. That's the people of this world. The people of this world try to deceive you. They try to tell you that they have all the answers. Verse number 27, but the anointing that you receive from him abides in you and you have no need that anyone should teach you. But as his anointing teaches you about everything that is true and is no lie, just as it has taught you, abide in him. The spirit, when, whenever you ask Jesus into your heart, 
and you have the Holy Spirit inside of you. The Holy Spirit will be your guide. You don't need anybody to teach you. That's not to say we don't need to be teachable. There, there are people in our lives that obviously have wisdom given to them by God and that are trying to seek after uh, uh, the things that are above and not just the things of this world. And those, you know, We do need to take advice from sound um, uh, teachers and, and authorities and things like that. But ultimately, the Holy Spirit will be your guide because even those people, like I said before, are fallen and aren't perfect. And you need to listen to the spirit and trust the spirit that's inside you. I talked about this the other day at our church that when, and I might've even said it on here, when my wife is upstairs and I'm down here, like if she calls for me upstairs, I recognize her voice right away. And I recognize the tone. Like if she's mad or if she's frustrated or if she's in a good mood or if she's needing something, I can tell. And how can I tell that? Because of the, 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 the relationship that me and her have developed. We've been around each other for years. We know how each other talk. We know how each other sound. We know the tone that each other have. And it's the same way with our relationship with God. Like you can trust that voice of God because you've developed it. You've been in the word. You've sought him. You've prayed. You've at, you've over and over again. You're, you're seeking that daily renewal. Like it says in Romans chapter 12, verse one, you're seeking that daily renewal, trying to get as close to God as you possibly can to where you get that, that relationship developed to where you can recognize his voice. To where you're not having to say, is this really from God? Is this from the spirit? No, you could just trust it because you've developed the relationship over time. Just to talk for a second about how we as, as specifically, and I'm calling out the men right now, like how should we as men, two different passages, I'm going to, I'm going to jump to, but how should we as men raise our kids the right way? How should we be the best fathers that we should be? Like, I'm going to give you the answer right here. I'm going to give you the cheat code because a lot of people want to know. And I'm pretty confident that this is, you know, I don't know everything. I'm not the smartest guy in the world, but I know through these two passages of scripture that I'm about to read you, this is the answer. So if you've been looking, how do I be a better dad? How do I be a better husband? What's the answer? I don't know. I wasn't raised in a home where I had a father that taught me. I'm about to give you the answer right here. This is Genesis chapter 18, verse 19. Um, actually let's do verse 18, seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. Verse 19, for I have chosen him that he may command his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing righteousness and justice so that the Lord may bring to Abraham what he has promised him. That, okay. I'm going to read that again. And put, like I said a second ago, uh, examples, like in terms of like, I think things in our life, a lot of things are just examples for us at the end of the day. Like we, we look, we're, we have such a tendency as human beings just to look at things and then pick out the negative. But if it's a bad situation, look at the example of how you can grow on that, how you can go, grow through that and be better because of the circumstance. We need to take these stories in scripture too as examples for us. So where he says, where God says, for I have chosen him. Insert yourself in there too as a father. For I have chosen you, and the next words, that he. So not only has he chosen, what has he chosen him for? I chose him that he may command his children and his household after him to keep the Lord. What does that mean, after him? That doesn't just mean you are a dictator, that you just lording over your family, but it's saying be that example. How do you be that example though? You might be saying, well, I don't know exactly how to do that. I've not, I was not raised in a Christian household where I, I don't know. I, I, I really, Matthew six thirty three. here's your answer, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. So if you want to know how to lead your family in righteousness as in justice, as God ordered Abraham to do, seek first the kingdom today. God's going to take care of your tomorrow. If you want to be a better man, if you want to be a better husband, if you want to be a better father, if you want to be a better leader, if you want to be better in your work environment, whatever it is, seek first the kingdom because everything else will be a byproduct of that. If you are just devoting your life to seeking after Christ, to reading his word, to praying and actually just doing these things, not to just check a box. There, it's so easy. I was. I, I think he'll be okay with me sa- sharing this story. My man David Howitt. He has an account on um, Instagram called Spiritually Dangerous, and for a while there, he was posting every single day where he was doing his workout 
and his devotional. And he said he got to a point where he was like, oh, I got to read because I got to post about it. And it's so easy to fall into that. I got to do this because I got to check it off the list. This stuff is more important than just checking it off the list. This is how you literally grow. This is how you get better. This is how you achieve the things that you're trying to achieve in this life, which is ultimately trying to point people to Christ and trying to just be the best person that you could be unto God. Like as a Christian, I'm, I'm speaking from a Christian worldview as a, in a, and, and a Christian perspective, because like if you are a Christian, that should be your goal. Just trying to point people to Christ, just trying, trying to bring honor and glory to his name. Because like Paul says, I've died to self. That's how we need to be. Jesus said, you are to, uh, uh, what is it? Deny yourself, pick up your cross and follow me. And so um, that's all that I really got for you guys today. I hope this was something that was an encouragement to you. Again, this is not, this episode was not meant to just be uh, bashing dads or anything like that, but just a, uh, an encouragement that don't try to be like anybody in this world. Don't try to be like your, you know, uh, hero that you're looking up to your whole life. Like look up to Christ, seek after trying to be as close to Christ as you possibly can. Not anybody in this world, because they will let you down. God bless you guys. Have a great week.